What's up guys, this is Ashnox Balance Adjustment Preview. We have some really, really exciting stuff in this one. Stuff we've been waiting for, for a long time, man. Finally, it's happening on the 2nd of September. That's when it's gonna drop. I'll showcase these heroes. So definitely stay tuned for that, guys. Look at this. We got seven heroes and two artifacts getting buffed. Single target cleave meta, baby. Let's go single target cleave meta with combat Ness manipulation combat Ness overflow taking turns over the enemy not letting them go fighting back against anti-cleave mechanism ml charles closer charles i talk about this stuff in his rta video check it out if you haven't yet if you are wondering how that stuff actually works why it works and why it's so goddamn awesome okay let's go here we have apocalypse ravi yes we wanted this we've been waiting for this luna thank god we are getting the luna buffs finally god and they are strong they go hand in hand with the single target cleave meta and Karik getting buffs what like he just got buffed and he's really strong but he's even stronger now what mind blown man mort injury meta let's talk about this we have some potential meta changers on our hand roaming warrior leo bomb meta potentially bomb can be really good and i'll talk about that if you should recall him roaming warrior leo with summertime isaria right around the corner a lot of fun to be had with bombs and it could you know have a bomb meta but not in rta because they can break the chain take out your summer time hysteria and that's done but controlled environment arena guild war pve content because bomb when they detonate it's a stun effect it's a stun happening you cannot resist that that's great for pve content abyss tomato and tower as they add more floors like you have some really cool things that you can pull off with that now domino is getting some buffs mercedes free hero cool getting some buffs gonna help out the newer players and uh, i'll showcase i want to showcase mercedes as well artifacts merciless gluton this thing oh boy this thing is gonna be great for warriors of course and you know for uh combat units manipulation uh cr overflow get more turns than the enemy go over the amount of cr they have like uh yeah cr goes abo above 100 percent, and you can do some really really cool stuff about that and like a lot of players don't know about this stuff secret art storm sword this thing is gonna be dangerous man i'll talk about that in a few minutes Karik exclusive equipment change yes 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 oh boy okay let's start it off guys apocalypse ravi skill one cannot inflict injuries and you will do more injury the more damage you do and the maximum is 10 percent of their maximum health that you can like destroy with injury and uh yeah skill one so counter set on her more injuries that's good and more has injury as well soul burn damage increase uh with the skill number one now the passive you get 15 percent combat trudiness every time you get attacked the skill to the passive is packed with goodies already and that's really good she's gonna cycle faster and uh she can potentially cut because of uh this right there so that's good now the skill number three when you bring someone back to life an ally that dies you bring it back to life it's not 10 percent health that they will have now it's gonna be 30 percent you get skill nullifiers one stack already that's good but 10 percent was too low 30 that that's more like it especially when you're running like tanky heroes bruiser comps you know like it's really gonna help a lot to have that bit more of health now the damage dealt is increased every time somebody dies with the skill number three effect can stack up to three times i don't know we we don't know how much more damage we don't know the multipliers i'll showcase her we'll know but guild war situation or you're stuck in a situation where it's you're on a loop and you you, you can't pull it off or it's too hard to pull the burst damage to down the opponent well as you are killing and you bring your ally back to life whatever or maybe no one died but the damage goes up and it's going to secure the kill it's going to facilitate things for longer battles and that's good that, that's definitely a good thing because apocalypse ravi is very hard to down guys very hard to kill her because what she's able like so much life that she can gain back the tankier you build her and that's going to help her out 
deal that extra damage. Okay, Luna. Skill 1, guys. Skill 1 can attack multiple times. And the Soul Bird makes it so you hit the maximum number of attacks for only 10 souls. And the difference between the minimum number of attacks and the maximum number of attacks is a big difference, guys. Uh, the skill cooldowns decrease by 1 to 3 turn, uh, you know, uh, the, of the skill number 3 when you use the skill number 1. But that is some guarantee big burst damage right there from Luna on her skill number 1. I really like that 10 souls is easy to obtain throughout the battle. And uh, you're going to be able to use her in uh, single target cleave. You're going to be able to use her even in stall comp, you know, healthy, especially with her, her passive now. And uh, you can have her on a counter set. Yeah, she's going to be annoying. So increase critical hit chance, that's like before, right? It's passive, but you now have critical hit resistance by 30% at any time. You don't need to have less than 50% health. You know, it happens all the time. It will mess players up and it's going to be annoying if you're trying to take her out. You're cleaving, man, and oh god, you can't land your, your crit. Annoying stuff, man. Skill number three, okay. Big, 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 big. This thing, this thing is beautiful, man. Okay. So the soul burn goes away to do the increased damage, but this penetrates defense by 50%, guys. This is like Sormia. This is very welcome versus like super tanky heroes with high amount of defense, high amount of damage mitigation. This is a big one right there. And you get five souls when you use this thing. And if you defeat an enemy, you get an additional five souls. Ten souls so you can go back to back with the skill 3 if you defeat someone and to the soul burn skill 1 big damage will happen with luna i can't wait to showcase her she's gonna be amazing she is definitely gonna be amazing now the damage between before with the soul burn on skill 3 versus the penetration of defense by 50 percent i mean the, the the more defense they have the stronger this will become compared to before but maybe if the target was squishy uh, then uh, it's not as much damage as before but I think it's going to be overkill damage anyways. You were going to destroy that target with way too much damage compared to how much health they have anyways. So it doesn't matter. Now, what, what happened to one shot, uh, you know, Luna and PvE content? Well, well, penetration of defense is great, but defense break is stronger than this. And 50% defense pen when you already have 70 is not as strong right as going from no defense pen, uh, defense penetration to to 50 or uh, like you know no penetration to to 70 anyways uh still like luna is gonna pack a punch in pvp it's gonna be crazy man Karik, okay wow stealth is now not from skill three but from the skill number two it's gonna piss some players off right but skill two is great you know you can definitely open with that st that thing and uh, you can do great things, man. You can remove up to two buffs. You can increase their cooldown twice by one turn. And you get the stealth now. And damage proportional to the target speed. And like, it's a great skill. And it packs quite a punch. But now you don't have stealth on skill 3. But, but, the exclusive equipment gives you attack buff before you deal damage uh, for two turns with the skill number 3. Yo, mind blow, this thing is crazy, because now you can deal big damage with the skill number 3, and it was kind of too good to be true, right? You couldn't have all that plus the stealth on skill number 3. So, yeah, you're going to have to choose. Do you want to open for survivability with the, the stealth? You don't want to count, have counter attacks happening. Uh, you know, give focus to Seaside. I mean, why Seaside would be there? You don't want to bring Karik versus Seaside, but you never know, man. So, so sometimes you get counter picked and stuff like that. But... Yes, you can decide open with skill 2 or skill 3. Big damage on skill number 3, man. Getting attack buff before, before dealing the damage, guys. And then it's silence for one turn if you have effectiveness on him. Really annoying stuff. Silence is so powerful. And it penetrates defense by 30%. Oh, God. And another multiplier that boosts the damage based on how much speed you have on top of, you know, how much attack crit damage you know that that's great like that that's gonna be so much damage Karik is amazing you know he's a mage you can wear Tegil's ancient book you can use him as your opener in uh you know a uh, cleaving a like aoe cleave single target cleave like there's a lot of options and uh Karik plus pavel is great because you have the souls for pavel to you know soul burn skill two and two uh skill three wow okay okay more now soul burn is here increase the effect chance to 100 percent chance to decrease defense for two turns that's cool because he has ignore effect resistance when he ha when he's enraged. So very powerful there. And then 
you also you also have something else that's really juicy here you got 30 percent chance to counter attack when attacked that is in his skill to in his passive that's good man and then the trigger chance uh for the sacred blessing goes from 40 to 50 percent so more chance there that's cool uh, but not something you want to rely upon. It's random. And that's something I talked about when I showcased Mort when he was released. And the skill 3. Now you can do injury up to 20% of the target's maximum health. That's good. It's up to 15 up to 20%. And damage was increased of this skill. You don't need the soul burn to deal the max damage. It's already there. So it's going to facilitate things. You're going to be uh, able to hit that hopefully 20% injury by using the S3 and uh, that's going to speed things up and uh, injury plus the frenzy and RTA definitely with the stall meta stalled heroes and bruisers really annoying stuff and Mort well he's going to be able to help out with this thing I don't know how effective it's going to be I'll showcase him and we'll see together how it works okay roaming warrior Leo bomb meta let's talk about it here this skill number two fire shock bomb is a skill number uh, two right it's a single target attack it now, instead of increasing skill cooldown by one turn, it has decreased defense for two turn. 100% chance unless it gets resisted. 15% innate resist is the bane of the buffers, of course. Uh, decreased skill cooldown of uh, the skill number three by one turn. That's great. Skill three is definitely a skill you want to use as much as possible. At the end of the turn, detonates bomb inflicted on the enemy. This is detonation of a single detonation of the target that you hit with the skill number two. Skill three. Go Raku uh, attacks all. This is great with a summertime hysteria. When you do an AoE attack, it will boost the combat units of your whole team by 15%. She will place two bombs on random uh, heroes. And, and if you can open with him, I mean, not open, you need to deal with their immunity set. But this skill can deal with immunity. If they don't have a Fallen Cecilia protecting their immunity set, you'd use this thing, it will remove the immunity off of them. And 100% chance to put speed down debuff for two turns and bomb for two turns on them. And then he has skill nullifier for a boost of survivability on himself. Very welcome change right there. The soul burn on skill number three, guys, actually gives him an extra turn. So you can skill three into skill number two. And detonation damage dealt is increased on skill number two, guys. So if you're trying to take out a hero that's you want to soften up a hero. Let's say you want to detonate ASAP. The hero was about to go or something. They're going to cut. And you want to stun because stun cannot be resisted. You stun that hero with that skill number two. And then it's time for Summertime Hysteria to go. And she can detonate the rest of the bombs on top of her bomb that she applied. So and then you stun all of them. And it worked great in controlled environment. PV content, of course. Abyss, uh, Automated Tower, higher floors that you're going to introduce. Stuff like that. You can do great things in PV content with bombs. Uh, like in Summoner's War, right? And then in PvP control environment, Arena Offense, Guild War Offense. I think Bomb is going to shine there unless you get shafted with 15% NH resist. But you, if you have more than one Bomber, right? You just, you don't only have ML Leo, you have also Summertime Isaria. So that's cool, right? So I'm looking forward to that. Now RT, it's too easy to break the chain. You can ban, they can just ban your Summertime Isaria, ML Leo, whatever. Like it's not going to work as well. But they will introduce more heroes with bombs. So that's something to look forward to. So very welcome changes. Now, should you recall him? Well, if you're interested in bomb mechanism, if you're more into control environment, you know, PvP, and you, you want to use bomb and PvE content, I think that you should keep roaming warrior Leo. He's definitely going to be uh, a great uh, hero to have in a bomb team. Like, that, that's too good. Like, able to land bombs on the whole enemy team, you know, removing a buff. Uh, you know, removing potentially immunity set. Now you can be using like Operator Sigrid, Bazaar, Broman, you know, uh, to take off the immunity off of the uh, the enemy. Even you can use Ian and get the attack buff, you know, remove their immunity or at least hopefully remove it. So you're not shafted if you can't pull it off with uh, Roaming Warrior Leo. So that's cool right there. Domino, okay, 100% chance with the Soul Burn on skill number one for stun. That's good with the uh, Specimen says you can do some cool things with that. She's a four star hero. Now, there's an issue here, guys. The meme comps, the reflect meme comps are getting shafted. What is happening here? This skill number two is not an activatable skill. It's a reactive skill. With, when an ally suffers a critical hit, has 35% chance to activate Blizzard Cape, can only be activated 
once every three turns. You need to set up your Reflect with Royal Tarnal Guard that is not leveled up. So he has no damage mitigation, no defense, and he has Reflect on him. You have Reflect from this buff, and then you want them to attack you after that, and they will kill themselves. That's great, but then it doesn't work because this has to be triggered. It doesn't, it's not a usable skill anymore. This is madness, guys. We should fight back. <laughs> oh, man. It, it was, like, it's a fun thing, but then, like, why they gotta go in there and mess things up? Uh, I cannot keep everyone happy. That is for sure. Okay. Skill number three attacks all. You got, uh, you know, 90% chance to stun for one turn. And now 100% chance to decrease combat units by 15%. It's not 50% now. It's 100% more reliable. And then you got increased speed for the caster for two turns. So she can cycle faster and uh, be annoying with those stuns, man. So that's cool. Mercedes, cool. She attacks two targets with skill one. Combat units increase for herself 15%. Cycle faster because of that. Now, okay, let's look at this together, guys. Her skill three is like Charles. It, like, it deals damage, and then you get attack buff for the whole team for two turns. Critical hit increases the damage dealt. That's like a higher crit damage multiplier or something. So that's cool. Man, that's really cool for newer players. You get an attack buffer that deals damage. I feel like I can put her to good use. Even uh, for, uh, you know, a mid-game, late-game player, there's some, some usage out of Mercedes. There's some fun things that you can pull off. Uh, of course, I'm not expecting the greatest, thing, greatest of things, but still... Uh, I think that's a very welcome change right there. She's got two AoE attacks. Skill 1 attacks two targets. Skill 2 attacks all. And then you have 70% chance to dispel one buff. That is cool, man. And then you... Uh, yeah, when you're granted uh, attack buff, it activates dimensional rupture as an extra attack. Uh, yeah. Like... Wait. Uh, do they mean that if you use skill 1, it will activate skill number 2 dimensional rupture as well? And if you use skill 3 when you have attack buff, it will use dimensional rupture after? No way. No, what? When the caster is granted increased attack, activates dimensional rupture as an extra attack. They're not saying it's going to use the same skill again when you use that skill. They're saying like it's going to be activated as an extra attack. They're not like it could work on the other skills. Yo, if that's the case, that could be huge right there. Uh, that's like, uh, yeah, th that could be used like Arc Demon Shadow, right? uh type of oh man like that that's yeah i'm excited about that i really want to showcase that hmm okay merciless gluten artifact guys this is a big one this is for warriors only right it's a five star artifact not everyone has it but when a single target attack uh, with a single target attack you increase damage dealt by 15, uh, 16 percent this is like the unity artifact in guild or it's permanent it's not like portraits with saviors it's not when they have 50 percent hp or more it's always activated so that's great. Now, the greatest thing here. When defeating an enemy with a single target attack increases combativeness of all allies except for the caster by 12%. Wow. Wow. Like, this thing will push your CR push even higher. Like, you're going to be able to stack that CR pushing. You can have Sash Itane on top of that on a Ranger. You can have this thing. I mean, you can do super crazy things with combativeness overflow. You can go way above 100% and you can beat anti cleave mechanism heroes like you know elena tapas Seren, general purgus you can uh, arbiter village you can beat their cr push and you can go and steal their turn and go back to back and not let them have a turn and just take them apart you, you can do great things with that and merciless, merciless gluton i'll put that to good use i'll showcase that it's definitely going to be a very powerful one guys now here see secret art storm sword this thing, when you use a non-attack skill, it now boosts your combat chance by 24%. When an enemy uses a non-attack skill, that means that if you put that on a thief that has combat chance pushing, like ML Charles, that means that even if the enemy cuts, right, there's different usage for this thing. If the enemy goes before you, but the rest of your team was closer to go than them, and their CR push is not that big, it's a 20%... Uh, maybe it's a 25%, even if it's a 30% CR push, you could beat them and you could go with your team back to back. And that, that's one usage out of this thing right there. But then you got the cycling, the faster cycling of a hero like uh, Celine, which is well, very welcome because she's built slower normally to hit harder because you want to like one shot the, the, the target when you trigger, you know, the attack buff and the blink. But man, that, that can be put on a thief and you can definitely put this thing to good use. Now, uh, 
yeah how does it work with the limit breaks of the artifact is it it's it's not a hundred percent chance to activate the attack buff but maybe the cr push is always 24 percent or the amount will be lower it's gonna be 12 to you know 24 percent so it's gonna be like between 18 percent if you have it at plus 15 but then you only have 75 percent chance to get the attack buff you can still put it to good use even if you only have one copy because of what i've talked about man this is gonna be really interesting I'm very curious what you guys think about all this stuff. So let us know in the comment section what you guys think about all that. I'll be showcasing this, these uh, heroes. Very excited about a lot of the uh, heroes getting a buff. If you enjoyed the video, guys, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe if you still haven't. If you're looking for an emulator, a new phone, or a guild on the global server, check the description of the video. But yeah, let us know what you guys think. That's it for this one. I'm Astronox. Good luck with all you do. Peace out for now.